Today, we'll be looking at how to cheat death in the future. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. Death happens to all of us, but human beings have never stopped trying to beat it, seeking to stretch as long as we will live on this earthly world. There are many aspects in which we continue to move on, whether by placing our trust in the afterlife or by looking to science for answers. Today, however, we may be on the verge of some truly amazing breakthroughs. It doesn't sound all that thrilling, but the sluggish speed of modern medicine is perhaps the biggest and most urgent way we can expect to escape death. In the past few years, medicine has grown at an unprecedented pace. With each generation, the average lifetime of a human continues to grow. With this in mind, new drugs and therapies are set to be created in the future that has not yet been conceived of and will become part of normal life. Just look at how anything like chemotherapy is now so commonly and vitally used, when decades ago it wasn't really an option, coming as early as the 1940s. Innovations in daily medicine will continue to prolong life and tackle illnesses in the future, particularly in countries with affordable health care where everyone can get the best therapies. But this doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of outwardly modern paths for medicine to go down either. Gene editing technologies like CRISPR, CRISPR, for example, could mean that in only a few years or decades, we'll be able to easily eliminate tumors and genetic disorders from the DNA of a patient, whereas neuroprosthetic implants and other mechanical modifications could also be used to treat brain conditions like Parkinson's disease. Plans are now in progress to cultivate organs for all forms of treatments, including transplantation in the future, rather than depending on human donors. For surgeons, biologists, and all medical science, we may be about to start on one of the most revolutionary and defining eras in the history of modern medicine. However, all of this development is not without dispute. Cloning is still a very real science field, with Dolly the sheep famously being the first cloned mammal back in 1996. But in more recent years, it has developed, with instances where pet dogs have been cloned, as well as a news article in 2017 that saw students in China create two cloned monkeys, which were the first cloned primates. According to others, we're now beginning to synthesize just body pieces, so we're getting more and more to actually cloning whole human beings. It offers a different solution to cheating death in the sense of today's issues. Although normal science advancement may well extend life, maybe even forever, cloning is something like a fresh start. Cloning doesn't replicate the consciousness of a creature or, potentially in the future, of a human, but it's more like a redo than a resurrection. But theoretically, it provides a way to keep someone safe, or at least the illusion of someone. However, the jury is still very much interested in whether cloning can ever be completely healthy. It has been widely documented that Dolly the sheep suffered from arthritis and lung disease before she died, causing others to question if she may have been born old. So in these early stages, the particular form of cheating death comes with a great deal of difficulty. Not all lifelong, near-future prospects, though is about maintaining one's physical body, but rather preserving one's consciousness. Mind uploading, or mind copying, is one of the most common pieces of possible future technologies being explored today. For example, the path to immortality is paved with bits and bytes of digital data, and digitizing and transferring a brain to the whole VR universe may be the best technological choice for building a real afterlife. But imaging someone's whole brain is far better said than done and some of the current brain copying techniques can potentially kill the organic brain as part of the operation, so they'd only ever be a possibility at the very end of someone's life, maybe perhaps at the post-mortem level. If this is the case, death will cheat at the last possible moment. Whether or not it will ever be a way of preventing suicide, neuron mapping technology is moving along, although very slowly. In 2019, for example, scientists were able to trace all of the neurons in the worm, one of the simplest creatures in the world. But, though it definitely ranks as an impressive achievement, it also shows how far we are at the present from being able to map an actual human being, let alone be able to bring them into a functioning VR environment. It's more like a science fiction fantasy than a real-world reality at the moment, even though it poses a host of important ethical questions. If we wanted to prolong human consciousness by digitalization, what would stop us from making two or three copies of any given entity at the same time? And which of those numerous computerized versions will be the original version? We've cheated on death, sure, but maybe we've rearranged life too. Luckily, there are a few more physically simple ways to escape death in the coming years, the most common of which is cryonics. Cryonics, not cryogenics, which is something else, 
is a method of freezing a corpse with the intention of resurrecting it in the future. As most sci-fi enthusiasts would recognize, the first human to be cryogenically frozen was James Bedford back in 1967, and the ashes of Bedford are still frozen to this day and preserved in Arizona. Cryonics is by no means a failed operation, however. Although modern cryonics do work, there are a number of problems and drawbacks with it. Notably, we do not yet have a way to revive someone who has been frozen, so there's no chance you'll ever be woken up. Why then do certain people always want to do that? Yeah, yes, they've got to be dead before you can go through cryonics, so maybe there's a feeling that there's nothing to lose. In general, the main reason people wish for, or are even interested in cryonics, is the unknown possibilities that the future could bring. If you can imagine that you have a terminal disease in this day and age, there is hope that a cure might be discovered in the future, and you might be brought back to life to accept it. In principle, it's wonderful. In fact, however, it's not that certain. The method basically amounts to getting someone alive from the dead, and there is no assurance that we will actually be able to reanimate the remains in this manner. This means that a cryogenically frozen human is absolutely at the hands of future generations that they will never know unless those future generations come good and invest in and develop successful reanimation methods. If people were ever to see frozen bodies brought back to life from the past, like that of James Bedford's, then cryonics may well be the norm but we're still a long, long way from this point. From now, the only logical way to cheat death in this way is to mix cryonics with mind uploading to reconstruct the brain of a deceased human and thereby relive them digitally. Yet it needs two innovations that are not completely integrated but may also represent a safer alternative. Finally, there are other death-defying futuristic means of sustaining existence that fills the distance between the real being and the non-physical mind. And though we all live our lives within our organic bodies at the moment, the future could one day offer a substitute, and yet another one, forever. Cyborgs, synthetics, and androids may potentially be used to sustain human civilization indefinitely. Here we have an infinite scope for A, digitizing the brain, and B, robotizing the body. We would have been mind swapping so that our brains, our human brains, could reside not only inside a machine, but also inside a modern, theoretically unbreakable, everlasting car all of our own 100% artificial and improved body with a truly authentic consciousness. Incredibly, we've already made some steps for this, too. As in 2014, scientists succeeded in bringing another worm's brain inside a Lego shell. While it is impossible that potential people would all be constructed of brightly colored bricks as usual, it shows just how far-reaching the technology might be and how far-fetched, as we are now, it could sound. Now, we're a long way from doing it, and in reality, that may never happen. But in the meantime, we're seeing some very promising advances in specialized cybernetics, and there are plenty of optimistic forecasts in the future. Scientists today are looking for cybernetic organs and implants in the human body that are not vulnerable to cancer, for example, to replace organic ones that are. We are now seeing the development of cybernetic eyes to fix blindness. While in science fiction, the convergence of medical science and computers always results in an ominous march towards some kind of automated dystopia, it may soon bring some genuinely life-changing possibilities to the real world. It is clear that, if science and medicine continue to develop, in only a few decades we will have a range of choices when it comes to extending our lives. And even if organic human beings continue to walk the road of all flesh and die, that does not actually have to be the end of the story. What if, let's say, you're offered the power of immortality, and to an extent, partially vulnerable? You can still get hurt, but will eventually recover from anything. You also remain at a peak physical age indefinitely. The catch is you're propelled to the beginning of recorded time with no resources or additional knowledge, including language. Would you do it? Let me know down in the comments below. And check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you on the next one.